Hello, welcome to the workshop. This is one of a series of videos we're doing on how to make useful products for around the home using some basic techniques and combining a small number of fundamental ingredients in different ways and you can make many, many useful things. So, in the first video, we looked at making furniture polish. We looked at using beeswax, we looked at using linseed oil, maybe some uh, essential oils to make it smell nice, and we looked at how to safely combine them to make a beeswax furniture polish at a fraction of the price that you would have to pay you know, if you bought it from a shop or over the internet. In the second video, we looked at saddle soap. We brought in a new ingredient because we started adding soap to our mix. We used a different oil because we used neat's foot oil. And we even talked about you can achieve different results by using different oils. So, neat's foot oil will soften your leather. If you use mineral oil, it has much less of a softening effect. So, according to what you're trying to achieve, you combine your ingredients in different ways. Today, we're going to look at shoe polish. And what that's going to bring to us is we're going to talk about a new wax, and we're going to talk about how to colour the products that we're making. Now, obviously, that information and those techniques and those new ingredients can be added to furniture polish. If you want a coloured furniture polish, after today you'll know how to take the information from the video on making neutral furniture polish, colouring techniques from today, put the two together, you've got coloured furniture polish, and so on and so on and so on. And that's very much what we're about. We're not trying to sit there and go slavishly follow the examples that we set. If we give you the information of why various ingredients do various things, you can combine them in any way you want to achieve whatever you want. So that's the preamble. Let's look at how we get on with it. Shoe polish, the formula is really easy. Okay, Five parts oil to two parts wax. That's it. Add a bit of colour if you want to. If you look this up on the web, you're going to get people saying to you, you know, you've got to use olive oil, you got to... Honestly, don't listen, alright? One vegetable oil, for the purposes of making shoe polish, much the same as another. Don't import expensive olive oil, extra virgin from Italy or whatever. If you're English, rapeseed oil, okay? If you're American, canola oil, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely fine. Sunflower oil works. And if you don't want to use a vegetable material, basic mineral oil, which is a petroleum derivative. If that's your thing, you can use that. I would rather use biodegradable oils, just because A, they're generally cheaper, and B, they're much kinder to the environment. So, what you can do, five parts, rapeseed oil, two parts of beeswax. We spoke them previously, great or pelletise your beeswax. I'll put a link in the description where you can get pelletised beeswax if that helps. If you want to put colour in, when you get into soap making and making a lot of these other things, a lot of people will talk about using oxides to colour. Oxides are relatively stable, relatively inert and basically they're different combinations of iron oxide so you can get brown oxide here we have brown oxide in a jar you can buy it from chemical manufacturers you can get black oxide black oxide is also a combination of iron and oxygen atoms so is yellow oxide all these different oxides are so called different amounts of iron to oxygen. Do you know what iron oxide is? It's rust. That's it. If you can grind up some rust to a fine powder, it is chemically identical to this stuff, which is quite expensive. But you know what else is brown? Cocoa powder works fine. Not black shoe polish? Find the ground charcoal. Most powders in a mix of oil and wax, ground very finely, will work 
absolutely great. You want a yellow one. Turmeric dyes almost anything yellow. A teaspoon of turmeric will get you a bright yellow shoe polish. If bright yellow shoes are your things. And so on and so on and so on. Powders can be found to get you whatever colours you want. I'm going to make two polishes today. We're going to do a brown polish and we'll use a proper brown oxide. And we're going to make that a relatively matte polish, so we will use pure beeswax. Then we're going to do a black shoe polish for a nice shiny pair of black formal shoes. And we'll vary the process slightly and we'll look at that in a minute. But let's do the brown stuff first. Before we start measuring out oils and waxes, it's very useful to know how much we're trying to create. How much you need to fill one tin. Here's my way of doing it. Start with a set of kitchen scales and I really like these screw top aluminium tins. They don't rust, they don't have those little twisty things that break off that shoe polish tins often have and you can use them again and again and again. Reuse, don't recycle. Pop an empty tin on your scales and you'll see it reads 10 grams. Well, I have scales that tear, T-A-R-E, which means you can reset the zero. Ever so useful for this work. So set it to zero and then roughly fill the tin with water to where you want the polish to come. I'd say that's about right, a little bit below the surface. 74, 75 grams should be perfect. Now we know we need five parts oil to two parts wax and a bit of colour. So if we say 50 grams oil, 20 grams wax, five grams for a teaspoon of colour, our measurement's not going to be far off. And if we want two tins, just double those measurements. Today, I'm going to make two tins of brown shoe polish. So I need 100 grams of oil, 40 grams of wax, a couple of teaspoons of colouring. These modern digital scales, whilst I'm much of a traditionalist, oh, do make these tasks so much quicker. Of course you can do it with balanced scales, but it is easier, like this. As we weigh out the beeswax, you can see why I strongly recommend pelleted beeswax if you buy it, grating it if you refine your own. I am happy to show you how to refine beeswax if anyone's interested. Having measured out our beeswax and our oil, we pop a double boiler on a saucepan full of boiling water. And by the way, a glass bowl is fine. You don't need a fancy one like this. We pour our 100 mils hundred grams of oil into the double boiler and we add 40 grams of beeswax. Those two will now melt together I won't make you sit through watching that. If you want to know more about the double boiler it appears in both of the previous episodes and is described in detail in the first one. We're about there now. Just a few last little lumps of beeswax to dissolve. And they're gone. And that was just stirring with a metal skewer. What I now need to do is colour this. And I'll do that mostly by eye and we're using our so-called brown oxide powder. So what we're going to do, sprinkle it in. And I'm using a teaspoon. That's just sort of half a teaspoon to start with. And very quickly, because it's a very fine powder, you will see it colours the wax quite darkly. You don't need to use vast amounts of this. Now, it will lighten a little bit 
as you smear it on. So I'm going to add just about another quarter teaspoon. So I've probably added 10 grams rather than the 14 that I might use the lighter powder. But it's, as I say, it's by eye. That's going to create a mid to slightly darker than mid coloured polish. And that's used a tiny amount of brown oxide. So the one advantage of the brown oxide is it does go a long way if you buy it commercially. And then so does cocoa powder, honestly. Next job then is to take that off the heat and pour it into the tins. There we have a before and after. And what I am doing here, although this is the heat is turned off, I'm keeping this over the warm water to keep it nice and flowing. But with some powders, you do need to let it cool a bit and keep stirring because the powder doesn't necessarily dissolve, it's just held in suspension. So as you can see here, there is some powder at the bottom. So you do have to mix well. And then give each tin a little stir. As it cools. Not hard, just take your metal skewer, give it a swirl just to make sure that powder doesn't all sink to the bottom. Let that cool for about an hour, pop the tin lid on, there's your polish. Now how simple was that? That was shoe polish. Three ingredients in ten minutes. How simple is that? I want to cover one variant with you just to give you an insight into some things you can play with to get a slightly different type of polish. We're going to make a shiny black polish. And to do that we need obviously a different colouring. And what we're going to use here, charcoal. Grind it up to a fine powder. It doesn't have to be a particular type, but I would tend to generally avoid the sort of briquettes because you don't know what's in them. But lump wood charcoal, absolutely fine. Just take the dust out of the bag of your barbecue charcoal, grind it up in a pestle and mortar as fine as you can get it, it'll work. If you want to buy black oxide commercial pigment, please do. You can use a black wax crayon to colour it if you wish. The other thing we're going to do is make it shiny. And to do that, we don't use pure beeswax. We add carinuba wax. This is made from a palm leaf. And it's incredibly shiny. I'll give you a close-up in a minute and you can have a look. Even the flakes of the stuff are shiny. But it is quite hard and it is quite brittle. So I tend to use half carinuba, half beeswax to ensure that the polish doesn't sort of crack and flake off. Brilliant stuff was originally known as Brazilian wax. So we'll have no sniggering from the cheap seats about Brazilian wax, please. Now more commonly called carinuba wax. So our recipe is going to be 100 mils of oil, 20 grams of carinuba wax, 20 grams of beeswax, and some ground charcoal for colour. I'll show you the grinding, do a close up of the carinuba. To grind down your charcoal, just a pestle and mortar works absolutely fine. You want to get it very fine. And what I will do after I've ground it, I'll pass it through a very fine flour sieve. That means that any large lumps that are left will be sieved out and won't be scratching the leather when we apply our shiny polish. And there you can see a few larger pieces left behind and beautifully fine powder passed through the sieve. Use a flour sieve, a very fine sieve to do this. This then is Caranuba wax. You can probably already see glints of light off it, but let me put a torch behind it for you. And you can see the reflections of the wax flakes. Really does give you a very glossy finish to your shoe polish. To make up our glossy black polish, 
100 grams rapeseed oil, 20 grams of pelletized beeswax, 20 grams of carnauba wax, a couple of teaspoons of very finely ground black charcoal. We'll melt the oils and wax together in a double boiler, then add the colour and set it in the tins. As you can see, when you use carnauba wax, the plain mixture of waxes and oils comes back to being a much darker brown without the addition of any colours because the carinuba wax itself has a darkening effect over white beeswax but obviously we're looking for black so we take a teaspoon of our finely grated charcoal you can see that the wax sort of sucks it in almost it's quite an odd effect and we mix that really well and you can see how it goes almost jet black inky now the thing is with black shoe polish it can't be too black you know you can have too dark a shade of brown it's very difficult to have too dark a shade of black so don't be frightened to add a little bit of extra charcoal to make sure that by the time that it's set you've got a really deep black to take your gloss Give that a stir and we'll let it thicken slightly before pouring. This is how I clean shoes. Firstly you need a soft clean cloth. Old t-shirt material, something of that sort, absolutely ideal. Wrap it over your index finger. Pick up a reasonable amount of polish, just rub it in a circular motion, don't try and press your finger in and break the polish. And then, with that on the end of the cloth, very gently, rub it into the shoe. You're not trying to bring up a shine at this stage. What you're trying to do is create a soft, even coat of polish all over the shoe. And then you let that dry only for about five or ten minutes and it will dry to a slightly cloudy, slightly opaque look. And once it's done that, you can take another very clean, very soft cloth and buff it up to a really good shine. Now I think you can already see, even before we start buffing, what that's going to look like. Now that's a homemade polish and that's the low shine version bear in mind. It doesn't take long. My granddad though used to clean the whole family's shoes every night including his work boots. He would then walk eight miles to work on a steam train. He was a steam train driver. And he wouldn't have dreamt of going out without a clean uniform and highly polished boots. It was a matter of pride to the man that he took care of his clothes and his family's clothes. It wasn't about looking smart so much as making sure that his boots were well looked after and waterproofed and all the rest of it. Once that's dried, just take a second cloth, a soft one, Lightly rub it up and you'll get a beautiful protected pair of shoes. If you want an even higher shine, and particularly when you're using your gloss polishes, put it on the same way. And then take a piece of cotton wool, dip it in cold water once the polish is dried. And in little circular motions, work that up to an even higher shine. And if you want a parade level shine, do you remember you saw this stuff melted? Well, in its melted state, let it thicken slightly. Sandpaper to roughen the toe caps of boots. And in its liquid state, apply a thin layer, polish it to a mirror polish with wet cotton wool. And then do it again and again and again. 
But with the addition of the Karen Uber wax, you can get a mirror finish on your shoes and boots. That covers what I know about shoe polish. There are, of course, thousands of these types of products we could cover if you're interested. Everything from soap and shampoo to household cleaners, glues, varnishes, and as you've already seen, once you know a little bit, it starts crossing over into each new product. And you go, oh yeah, that's so similar to, that uses the same ingredients as. It becomes much, much easier as we progress. If this sort of content is interesting to you, please click the subscribe button down below. Do it right now. Give us a thumbs up to say that this video was useful and tell me please in the comments, what would you like to see next? Do you want to see soap making? Do you want to see varnish? The way that Stradivarius did his violins, we can cover that. A thousand and one things that we could do. It's been great seeing you and we hope to see you soon. I better get on, clean the family shoes. You take care.